the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inerrant great word of truth glory be to my ave sitkanu to the highest and peace be to be the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my lord and savior jesus christ the only one being revealed to the sinful mankind to understand the greatest glorious revolution of his word being manifested in the flesh and now have given for us the completed canon of scripture to analyze and to realize what is the life of this man rather than looking unto the heaven and considering that we can see only the sky the stratosphere and about that we cannot even see the ozone layer as well looking upon the nature thinking that this is god and worshiping him but not able to realize the things that this mind of man can never conceive in spite of his gnosko and eidol knowledge but only by the spirit of the lord of god to reveal the truth we worship such great adonai elohenu adonai ekad who through by his word has revealed for us to understand the entire plan of god above all in this great and unique dispensation of the church age teaching for us to realize the completed canon of scripture which gives for us the complete understanding of his revolution only through the divining divine mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit who controls us who makes us to lead in the walk of right righteousness of lord not to get ourselves stumbled or to fall or to fail in the walk of lord god the holy spirit by using rebound so that until and as we are in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit we cannot come to understand the prayer of apostle paul mentioned for us in philippians 1 9 through 11 we are being chosen to be filled with the fruits of righteousness the fruits of righteousness in the terms of dikaya sune mentioned in ephesians 4:24 dikaya sune representing the righteousness and the justice of the lord of god the same things which have been placed in the ark of the covenant the two cherub one representing the righteousness and the other representing the justice what the righteousness of the lord of god demands the justice has to execute and now upon that mercy seat every believer being justified looking upon the grace of the lord of god to him so that whosoever believes the same righteousness being credited to their account not by works of man to be understood not by the rituals of the mind to be thought of not by the mind of levity to think that he could be saved by looking upon the things of disrespect to the right word of the lord of god and work as nature to be their gods and worship them not by your works not by your deeds not by your money you could be saved says even peter you have been saved by grace by faith alone in christ alone such great our lord our god we worship and we prove those things which have been put to test that which are of absolute righteousness that which have more value which is of more excellency not just following the standards of legal morality the truth that which we serve and which we love to die to serve for it 
whether they be hearers of obvious, whether they understand or not, my own family is enough, as Joshua told, when we follow the same things. After 120 years to become the preacher of righteousness, know her. Except his family members, none came, so it might be today as well. How many of the people will love to walk in the fruits of righteousness of the Lord God, the Holy Spirit? rather than making a lives of lies a little leaven leaven the whole lump if we are not in the righteousness of the word of the lord of god and have two or three people who are enough to worship the lord of god in the spirit of truth and his word as abraham prays for the sake of lot asking several times if it is 50 40 30 10 or 5 will you spare O oh lord the natives of that land and if they were fire as well I will spare such our Lord but for the count they were only three and four even in the same today's Christendom if we are able to find our own family members coming and walking in the paths of righteousness of his truth that's enough whether we have our breath in the Lord of our God to preach every day and whether they listen to this or not, we don't care. Our duty we need to do, our duty we need to go along so that we shall not be a stumble one. But when the term comes, helicrinias, to be sincere, that's what the word being translated, but apart from that, when you look into the Greek, you have a lot of meaning to learn from that. Our entire life depends upon that one verse of Philippians 1.10. The work of each and every word under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being penned and kept for us, rightly divides between the righteous and the unrighteous. Rightly divides so that we can understand the operation of our understanding, what exactly is happening there, what exactly is looking there, what exactly is being termed over there. How many days more we want to live in the present lies rather than looking for the future which is only of truth, which is only of Christ, wherewith our Lord of our God said for us through, through the things pertaining to Apostle John in Revelation chapter 5, he was slain and is worthy to be receiving the wisdom, the glory, the honor, the wealth, the riches, everything, the blessing. And it belongs unto him that to plow the ass abundantly belongs unto Christ. And he treads in the paths of righteousness and he walks in the paths of justice. Therefore he has made us to put upon the new man so that the word dikaiosune, which I call as holiness, a combination of righteousness and justice of the Lord of our God being put together to be called as the holiness of Yahweh Elohim. And in fact, even indeed, every mature believer in Christ who has been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, quote it as only the holiness and in the benignity of truth. Because when we read in Psalms 48, 1 as well, we look upon, uh, upon a city of Lord of our God which belongs only to holiness, holiness, holiness. And we walk in the highway of holiness. And as long as we have breath in our nostrils on this earth after believing in Christ, where with Apostle Paul writes for us to understand you are every walk have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every breath have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You need to be controlling, you need to be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And your life have to be trading in the paths of righteousness and justice so that by putting upon the new man, by the renovation of the spirit of your mind, you need to prove that which is good and acceptable in the sight of the Lord of God. By the term heli crine, heli refers to sun, crine means to judge. Even when you have been taken till to the extreme exposure under the sunlight, there should not be any blame or spot. That's why many Christians today they suffer sicknesses. When the light has come, they don't love to come and expose the deeds of righteousness. In the light, but they want to walk in the paths of darkness. And when they're walking in the paths of darkness, they don't love to come to look into the light. But Ephesians 5.12 teaches to us, expose the works of darkness, aglanco the works of darkness and prove that which is right in the manifestation of the light. 
You have been kept over here not to be a partaker of the works of darkness, but you have been called to reprove those works of darkness. A glanco to convince them what is right in the sight of the word of the Lord of God and prove them what it is accurate and how they have to learn and how they have to walk in this right righteousness of Yahweh Elohim of his great holiness in the law. Apostle Paul writes Dikaya Sune, the holiness of Yahweh Elohim. Apostle Peter writes, He is holy, so you need to be holy. We are having the next life, which is to be filled with only righteousness, saith of Allah after millennia. Apostle Paul writes for us in Philippians 1 love and 2, 1, 1 10 to tell that you shall have the fruits of righteousness only in Christ. Dear brethren, do you know what is your life in Christ if you don't walk in the paths of righteousness of the Lord of God? Do you know at least how can you walk in the paths of righteousness apart from the way how the world looks as righteousness to be as lies? Their lies itself is a relative righteousness for them. Holier than the attitude is really a lie. They do not know what it is. They want to prove their deeds by money. They want to prove their works to hypocritical standards. They want to say they are really doing Lord's work. In fact, indeed, when we look upon from the term of kleptes to sharuras, warranted minded pastors, if they are not proving rather than becoming a stumbling blocks, if they are not proving the daily teaching of the word of the Lord of our God, every day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, in the right isagogical category, collection, collection of the word and teach them with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations with the intense harmonical principle and tell them the truth. If they're not proving that, then they're in return becoming a stumbling blocks. And that's what they're able to do today in the church age. And they tell yet they're doing righteous deeds of the law. The agony for which our Lord of our God purchased for us on the cross for three hours wherewith we couldn't even look. The firmness of his heat. Because the great pain was to depart for three hours with the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and Lord God, the Father for which he cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. The great pain of agony on behalf of us. And he purchased us with a great price. You cannot even remember, you cannot even think over it, what the price it is. And we aren't even able to be like the Thessalonian crowd who had only the half revolution of Apostle Paul because they couldn't find the revolution of the things pertaining to Apostle John or in fact in term the things pertaining to the, uh, the, 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 thing, the things pertaining to the completed canon of scripture. They couldn't have. They had only the revolution which Apostle Paul given for them to write about the things pertaining to God and they were waiting for the one who was uptaker by living out the worship of idols, by living out the works of unrighteousness and they were walking in the paths of righteousness and they were looking upon the one who would be an uptaker by Christ and not the one who could underlead them without being in Christ. How truly they stood for the Lord. But we now have the completed canon of scripture. The first deed of righteousness what we need to do believing in Christ. That's it. The second deed of righteousness is what? To grow up in grace on the knowledge of Bible doctrine. How? The third deed of righteousness which you have to put number one always is to use rebound. 1 John 1 9 in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. If you are not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, your life itself is a deed of unrighteous one. Though you may call yourself to be a Christian. If you are not being controlled under the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, you have lost it. Remember the Milkanic cow of 1 Samuel chapter 6. The way how our Lord of our God judges. He resents irreverence, dear brethren. You may be true to your heart, you may be true to your mind, you may be true to your soul, but you are not true to the Lord of our God because you are not searching and seeking the things of the right righteousness of Yahweh Elohim. What he has revealed and kept for us, what were the prayers made for the church age. In fact, even Apostle Paul, the greatest prayers in Philippians 1, 9 through 11, the greatest prayer of Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, enlightening the inner man of your eyes. You haven't even known the prayer which Christ our Lord our God prayed, so that when we are fully adult, grown up, tell Elias, perfect. As the way how Abraham was be told, walk before me and be perfect. 
Matthew 5, 48 quotes, You of you are the children of the Father in heaven, do the things that are perfect. And we do not even know what is perfection. Yet we are perfect in our own terms, yet we are perfect in our own righteousness, yet we are perfect in our own holier than the attitude, but we are never perfect to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using the privacy of our, re of our rebound, which is nothing but 1 John 1, 9. And when you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 1 John 1, 9 leads for you to learn and understand the word, the word, the word, because the cleansing of the garbage of your soul, so that you can document the whole. You can prove for which you have been called. Those things which are of more value, those things which are of more excellency. By though you have been judged in the hilly crinas, in the extreme exposure of the light of the word of the Lord our God, that you are not a stumbling one in your work for which you have been sent on this earth. The same work which has been continued in the past will be in the present, will be in the future. Even after the works, how the way, how earlier than us, with one spirit, the prophets did the work, with one spirit, apostles did the work, and now in the church age, under the term of kinecatesis, we need to do the work. And when we come back again to be with the Lord our God in the millennium, we have to do that work. And afterwards, when we enter into the new heaven and the new earth, we have to do the same work. And what we need to be, we need to be without a stumbling block. Because we produce only the fruits of righteousness. And for that who is witness, Lord of God is our witness. How many days more further still the congregation will not realize the righteous works of the Lord of God and become the slaves for the righteousness of Lord rather than becoming the slaves of unrighteousness and producing death. Every life, every breath that it has been given on this earth under the target for Christians. Sometimes we are ashamed to call ourselves as Christians because that Christianity which Christ our Lord our God had in his mind and he began at Antioch. Apart from him, including I, everything will be absolutely shamed in his presence when we stand for the judgment seat. Do you know why? Because all the things have been filled with lies. All the things have been filled with their lustful patterns of the olds in nature to do their works. Only Christ our Lord our God is eligible to be called as a Christian. And apart from that, we, the believers who have been given to be called as Christians, we are not even worthy to be nicked. Take a note of that upon our tongue. Do you know why? Because we are constantly grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not producing the fruits of righteousness for which has designed in us for eternity past to the praise of His glory and His grace. And that doesn't mean you're not capable. Every believer is capable of producing that and equal privilege and equal opportunity given for them to walk in the terms of putting the new man in the terms of Antichrist and Echai Hosea by the renewing of the spirit of their mind how by daily learning by daily learning by daily learning yesterday today tomorrow yesterday today tomorrow by daily coming says Proverbs 8 34 who shall find me happy easy he shall find the true life the true life of Christ to represent him because without Christ we are nothing the true life in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ what we have we haven't even learnt our life to think what is the true life because as a man looks upon the nature and he thinks because he can look into the sky and he cannot look the second heaven or the third heaven and he may try to look upon the second heaven by the telescope but he cannot look upon the third heaven because it's an abode of the Lord of a God. And he thinks our life is only belonging to the sky and limits are to the sky. <laughs> the greatest problem with us is being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit has believers in Christ. So that Lord God, the Holy Spirit can search in you the deep things of the Lord of God. Can go to the extreme case and to expose in the extreme light of the word of the Lord of God, like the sun which has been shining its extreme power and everything will be crystal clear over there. Likewise, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit will search the extreme things, the deep things of the Lord of God. And since we are not making in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to search ourselves diligently, to know and to work where is our failure, to know and to understand what is our failure. 
Do you know where we stand? We stand on the negative side. Though you are being called as a Christian, you stand on the negative side. When Lord God, the Holy Spirit doesn't search you diligently. How can Lord God, the Holy Spirit search you diligently? When you speak in tongues, throw that stuff. When Lord God, the Holy Spirit is in the controlling, mentoring ministry of you, certainly it searches deep things. It cleanses out the garbage in your soul. By changing the facets of human viewpoint towards the divine viewpoint, it cleanses the garbage in your soul. And what does the word of the Lord of God do when it's cleansing the garbage in your soul? It works renovation of your thinking. It works renovation to realize how dirt you are, how filth you are. And how we are to be, if not by the grace of the Lord of our God, could stand in His presence. And how worthless we are to stand and to handle His word in His presence, if it is not by His gift to handle His word. You will never even realize, if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what a sin that you are committing without having this bona fide gift to teach the word. And yet you want to live in the present lies rather than looking upon the future of the truth. Never you will wake up. Every believer ought to wake up to realize that the things which a man looks is certainly of a great distance from the plan of the Lord of God. That's the pain what we have every day. That's the pain what we look into every day. What a believer has been designed in the Lord. He is far away from the distance and even closer to the word to be thought of. His thinking is constantly uncertainty. And above all, he wants to come and prove in the logics of his irreverence quoting on the inside but outside appearing to be reverence if they're really having the fear of the Lord our God they would come to seek and search the truth in the deep searching of Lord God the Holy Spirit of the word Arano so that when they have been bought when they have been bought to understand the garbage in their soul to be cleansed they would certainly stick to build doctrine upon doctrine word upon word line upon line and they would categorize the teachings of the mind of the Lord our God every day and just not just be there to be categorized and to stop there again they will be having a great thirst or great hunger to look and to seek how many are there still yet I haven't known how much of the walk that I am walking contrary in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit though it has been permanently indwelling in us by grieving and squelching and lying how much of contrary I am speaking about miracles healings and tongues how much of contrary I am walking and that the many people they don't change and we are not worried about it as well do you know why if they hear and if they obey, they will grow up. If they forbear and disobey yet, they have a great price to be, pray, to be paid at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't worry. Every deed, what they will do, it shall come to pass at the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, James writes a great warning for us. Not many want to be the brethren of the preaching of the word of the Lord of our God. Be careful, you have a greater judgment, you have a greater punishment. Now you all may be happy. Don't worry about that. You all may be happy in ignoring at least to write once in your entire life to exercise your kingship, the entire word of the Lord of our God by kneeling down in his presence. You may ignore that. It may look for you like a stupid or it may look for you just as an act of cult. But you will realize what it is at the judgment seat of Christ. You will realize what is the grace that you are preaching, kneeling down in His presence every day for you. Grace comes before judgment for you and yet you will not realize for that. Don't worry. You will realize at the judgment seat of Christ for eternity to eternity, the ages which are to come one upon the another and what you have lost. We are not for here to teach you the sweet quoting preaching. What is right in the word of the Lord of our God that we need to preach because we are answerable to the Lord. So that we should not be a stumbling one for his truth. His election says, in fact, even Psalmist in Psalms 22, 11, or in the original Hebrew it is 22, 11, but in the English of translation it is 22, 10. 
He says, right from my mother's womb, O oh Lord, I was being flung into it so that it is by you because you are my God, you are my Lord, you are my rock. And from there itself our division begins. Therefore, he tells in Ephesians 1, 4 about the church age before the foundation of the world, I have chosen thee. And he tells the same thing in Isaiah chapter 41, verses 17 through 20 to produce that those who have been lost in their mouth, not to worry about the thirst as well. For them, I have bought to look upon the great water springs in the wilderness. I have bought for them to plant the trees of the Lord, referring back to the doctrine in the mind of Christ. And I have made everything so that when the people will wake up to realize the bara, what I have made, the new thing, what I have made. And after the millennium, he tells in Jeremiah 31, 22, the asa which is going to make as a woman surrounds her great man. The woman referring back to the Israel and the church being put together again. Those who wake up to realize that in the mother's belly he was been flung to understand that Yahweh Elohim is the only Lord and he is my God. Therefore I have been flung or have been put into my mother's belly for his work. And they will not do the work of stumbling one. Therefore Lord our God trains them up in the time. He trains them up in the purpose. He leads them in the terms of homo tumadan, one mind, one passion, one spirit, one accord. He leads them to the glory of Yahweh Elohim to honor his word above his name and whose passion is to search and seek what is the truth, what is the truth, what is the truth because they cannot walk a life of lie but they want to walk only a breath at every time they take the life of truth. That's the greatest privilege what we have in Christ. And these are the men who have been flung, says, in the Old Testament when the psalmist could tell in my mother's, from my mother's womb, Lord, you are my God. But in the New Testament, do you know what does he say? Before the foundation of the world, I have chosen you to be for me holy and blameless. <laughs> the prayers what the congregation prayed today sometimes. The request of the prayers what they keep. If they don't have the prayer of Apostle Paul in Philippians 1, 9 through 11. To grow up more and more in the knowledge of Christ our Lord, our God. To wake up. So that you shall not be a stumbling block. And the day of Christ. But rather you have been produced the fruits of righteousness. What a privilege it would be for us to live such life right now in the church age. Every breath of your life because we are dealing with the Shekinah glory of the Lord of a God who indwells in us. Who demands only holiness in the benignity of the standards of his truth. Which is the Theonustas, inspiration of the word of the Lord of a God, not the verbal communication what the people think. Today we don't have time for other religion thoughts to look except to tell. They look only to the sky and say this is the limit and worship nature. But they do not know that there is the third heaven, the heaven where our Lord of a God abodes. And we are of Him. The one who is far above than the heaven on this earth, what they think. That this is a creation, this is a God for them. But when we look in the right word of the Lord of a God and tell them what is the truth. And if they don't come to understand that, then we call them as reprobates, infidels, morons, clowns. In the rational mind of them, he wants to look the spirit of the word of the Lord of a God. And word of the Lord of a God is constantly a spiritual phenomena. If you are not a believer in my Christ, and if you have not been there in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit, every breath of your life after believing in Christ, and grow up in the knowledge of him, take a certain span of time where Christ our Lord of a God proved in his human flesh as well, the 30 years of preparation for 3 years of ministry. Likewise, if you don't grow up from milk to bread, from bread to meat, then never you will understand what it is to be not a stumbling block, though you have been exposed in the early crinase of the Lord, though you have been tested, never you will understand what it is. And yet you come over here on this earth having the same gift of your eternal life given to you because the gift of God is eternal life says the scripture all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord 
yet you possess the eternal life besides that writing the Paltima privileges apostle paul tells we have the completed canon of scripture we have the indwelling mentoring minister of lord god the holy spirit we have those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers from the right hand of lord god the father who teach you to understand the things of the heaven because the thoughts and the words of the lord of our god are far higher than the things of this earth and therefore we are told in colossians 3 to understand that to seek the things that are of the heaven not the things of this earth and put to death the deeds of your flesh and when i've been given such a great of information we need to live a life a walk of that which is of absolutely heavenly there is no way compromising in it there is no excuse in it there is no alibi in it if we are not able to walk in the right paths of righteousness of yahweh elohim the failure is in you there is no failure in god's system there is no failure in god's word and god's design god's purpose so you may say, if I don't have that righteousness of life in me, how can I walk? You are told to put on the new clothes. There is nothing that you can think you don't have. There is nothing that you can give your reasons to tell that your walk was a failure on this earth. The only reason is that you haven't searched in the right sphere of in the right spirit of the sphere of the fear of the Lord our God to walk for Him in truth and only in truth and nothing but the truth. You haven't really learnt about these things. The greatest danger what we look in the Christendom today. Even the pastors don't know that they need to walk without having a stumbling block in their attitudes. They have a stumbling block to tell they cannot teach the word of the Lord of our God every day. They have a stumbling block to tell the hearers are not there for you to learn. The one who has been given this bona fide gift says, No stumbling blocks. It is Christ our Lord our God who is going to make our way perfect. He is our strength. He is our power. David was faithful in little things. Therefore he was been called to fight the Lord's battle in the greater things when the when the blasphemous nations rise against to blaspheme the name of the Lord of our God. And what did David say? Battle belongs to the Lord. Why he was able to tell that? Because in his preparation he did not find any stumbling blocks because he was faithful to his word. He was loyal to his truth. He knew the power of the word of the Lord of our God. He knew the power of Yahweh Elohim. And it is not he who is going to fight. But it is the battle of the Lord who is going to fight for us. He knew that very well. Therefore the jealousness and the consuming fire which came to tell for him to realize. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that goes against my Lord? Hmm. Today there is no jealousness in the minds. There is no consuming fire in their attitude to look. The teacher and every pulpit is not been teaching the right word of the Lord of our God every day. Word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Though we have gone through the reformation movement of 500 years on October 31st of 2017, yet we have to realize the re-reformation movement which is to be bought. In the midst of this church where they are able to look upon the great evil which they bear and they were partakers of that fellowship when they could look upon the debaters like Didad or any other person and that's a great shame upon them that they couldn't overcome him by telling what is the right mind of the Lord of God. That generation passed by. Even the same declining process is passing by at every generation today as well. The failure is not in God's system. The failure is not in Lord's inspired word. The failure is in the system of the mind of men who reject to follow Lord's plan by daily growing up in his grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The failure on the part of the pastor teachers who fail to teach the word of the Lord of our God every day rather following some gimmicks and tricks to entertain the crowd. Youth attraction, musical attraction, jumping attraction, dancing attractions. <laughs> they do not know what mannerism of a sin they are able to prove. Because they are not looking their lives in the helly creeness of the word of the Lord our God. Just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, they want to change the truth into a lie. 
Never they will prove that which is good and acceptable in the sight of the Lord our God until they wake up to realize why the sicknesses have come in their lives, why the troubles they are going to go through their lives. And they will say it is the blessing for the Lord of our God that we need to suffer persecutions. Yes, but that persecution doesn't come because of you going away against the word of the Lord of our God and not walking in power. When you're walking in the path of the word of the Lord of our God, you will get a persecution that will be absolutely tough for you. But Lord of our God will lead it very safely. That's the great grace of the Lord. When you're doing his work properly, do you know what troubles you have? The way of Jeremiah tells, Come, let us go and smite, and we shall not listen to his words, and we shall have a contention against him. But Jeremiah tells, Lord, because of thy name I take the reproach. Who is going to fight the battle against whom they are fighting? Come, let us go and smite the tongue of Jeremiah, so that we shall not hear to any of his words. That's what today's Christendom is. The right teaching is not been accepted. That's the suffering what the pastor teacher will have. When there is a youth program in the church, the youth come only to have food. But they don't wake up their minds to understand the daily intake of the spiritual food. If there is any program in the church to have their cook being uh, the food being cooked to eat, they know what they do. They come, rushingly they come. For what? to eat the physical food but when it comes to the right spiritual food they ignore it they say no they don't want to take the spiritual food and that's the pain what we go through the sufferings of Christ it's not needed that the people should realize it's not needed that the people should recognize it's only the name and the honor of the word of the Lord of our God that has to be recognized, not we. What are we? We are only just like a breath in our nostrils. Today we are, tomorrow we may not be. But it is the message, not the man. The message which gets for them not to be making a stumbling blocks to those who are our hearers, to those who have been there earlier than us, who because they couldn't go to be a stumbling block for the work of the Lord of our God in their spirit. Either prophets or apostles or the church age pastors or evangelical realm of the work which has been given to them, they are no longer the stumbling block. They live a life of truth. They die a life of truth. They know even the people love to be called as it as a wrong and the people love to be entertaining that wrong. They say, no, right is right and they have to follow the right because whether the people love to accept it or not, they don't care. They are answerable to the law. Such pastors will be like the way how Jeremiah tells, come, let us go and smite Jeremiah. We shall not hear any of his words. The same thing today in our Christendom as well. Remember, consider your ways. And remember, Lord resents irreverence. Just as simple as that. He resents irreverence. He doesn't look into the terms of your mind to think your deeds, your actions, like the way how we find in 1 Samuel chapter 6, the crowd of Beth Shema. They wanted to do their work. They thought that they looked, Jehovah had already smitten many of the people with the great slaughter, and they have thought that among the men of Beth Shechem, they had looked into the Ark of the Jehovah, they had been smitten, and they thought that there was no smiting the Philistines, because though they looked in, but when it came to the men of Beth Shechem, why our Lord our God made them a great slaughter. They will never realize the ways of the Lord, how he deals with his own people. The world also today looks in the terms of the things of Philistine by referring that to the regional or religion minded religion minded morality standards but he doesn't know the way how he's going to deal with his own children 
he has put the church age believers to wear upon the new man in the terms of Endikaya Sunekai Hosiatis Thessalatia. He doesn't let you go against his essence, against his design, against his plan, wherewith you think you are really looking into the Ark of the Covenant and you have forgot the right ways how to carry it, how to look it. Because you are following the priest Uzziah, but you have never followed the understanding of the right teachings of that word, which has been given for them instructions in Exodus chapter 4, or Exodus chapter 24. The people think they are doing a good work getting the Ark, getting the Ark of the Covenant upon the bullock hut of the Philistines, the Milkina Cow incident of 1 Samuel chapter 6. Today the church age is also thinking what it is we are going only just, just to be a Christians. We are looking upon the weekly one's service. We are looking upon our legal deeds of paying tithes. We are looking upon everything. But remember you have already been small. If you are not looking upon the word of the Lord our God every day more than the physical breath that you take and the physical food that you consume. You may be right in your own ways, but God's ways are different, dear brother. God's plan is different, dear brother. Because of your ignorance in daily teaching the word of the Lord our God, debaters like Didad will arise to put you upon shame, to ask you, show me one verse in the Bible where Christ our Lord our God said, I am God, and, and he said to worship me, and if you don't prove, and if you prove that my head will be upon the guillotine, then certainly you can chop me off. And if you prove, I will take baptism and I will be saved. What a shame it is upon those Christians who couldn't answer that verse. What a great wealth we have in each and every word being penned by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the book of Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. In fact, indeed, every facet of the Bible, what we look from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, what a great information we have. Before that information, such morons are nothing. In their roguish mind, what they want to tell. In their avant thoughts, what they want to prove. The word of the Lord of God stands written, it stands written whether you prove it or not. But your life should be of a great Helicrina's judgment. In the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness. That you walk the life, a life of great. No stumbling blocks, but a life of truth in Christ. How many days more you want to be not understanding the ways of the Lord? How many days more you want to backslide from the right righteousness of Yahweh Elohim? Does not John 3 write for us? The light had come to the world, the people loved more darkness rather than the light. Because they did not want to expose the deeds of the revealed one in the light. Such is the attitude of those believers today. If they would love to come and enjoy the fellowship of the true light in Christ, they would certainly come to daily learn the word of the Lord of God, irrespective of their alibis. The time of their life on the journey on this earth, do you know what it is in the sight of the Lord of God? If it is not in walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath being controlled of Him, to live in Him and to certainly walk in Him, then your life is not a true life. It is a fakery of false. It may resemble for you to be like a true life, but it is not. It has been taken to the point of conjecture in your mind. That's what even the surah which has been written for them in Quran tells. The crucifixion of the Lord of our God is a conjecture because it has been not been able to look upon those people who had knowledge at that time. They didn't have knowledge. It was just a conjecture. <laughs> That's what the Christians are proving today. No knowledge and everything seems for them to be conjecture. And what God they want to worship, they want to say that it is cross and we go and worship Jesus Christ. That's it. But coming to the real thought of the words, coming to the real court of the words, coming to real life of the words in their lives, that has to be for them to understand that they have to get out from the conjecture of their minds. They never really understand what is crucifixion. Never ever they will really understand what is incarnation. 
Never ever they will understand what is resurrection if it is not been properly trained for them every day, every day, every day by those true bona fide gifted spiritual male pastor teachers whose right duty is to be not a stumbling block to the glory of the Lord. How many days more yet to want to be a stumbling block to the glory of the Lord? Considering your ways. And never understanding the ways of the Lord our God, the way how he deals. The milk and a cow incident in 1 Samuel 6 teaches for us a great lesson that we should never forget. The way how the slaughter for Philistines had happened, the way how it happened to the Jews in the Beth Shechem was more. Jehovah shall judge his people. And the fact that he judges is a proof, not that they are not his people, not that he does not love them, but the way he resents irreverence. The same thing what the church congregation today is looking. In the first, first century when we looked, the greatest pain by Ananias and Sapphira, we shall find the greatest activity of the Lord our God for his resenting irreverence. Today at every breath of the life, every believer grieving and squelching and lying and every passionate teacher not able to understand the right ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is to teach the right word of the Lord our God. And in fact, indeed, again, grieving and squelching and lying, he resents such irreverence. Do you know why he is yet gracious for you, you may ask? <laughs> because every believer has been bestowed with the greatest Paltimo privileges that this mind of men can ever imagine. You have been made positionally superior at the moment of salvation than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. You have been given the destiny of Christ, the righteousness of Christ, the eternal life of Christ. You share everything with Christ. Therefore, you have indeed been given call as Abba Father. You have been given the Paltimo privileges. You have been baptized by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been given the sealing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been kept as an armless deposit of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, now you have been the property of the Lord of our God. And our Lord of our God knew today or tomorrow you will certainly wake up to his call by the right bona fide work if you have the right duty of the spirit of the fear of the Lord of our God. Teach to you your purpose as such we are doing today in spite of waxing grieving squelching lying yet our Lord our God abides faithful do you know for what calling many sons unto glory to reach MJJ as he has showed the favorism towards Nineveh who are not able to discern between right and left if the bona fide gifted pastor teachers who have been teaching them the right word of the Lord of God by, able, by making them able to understand that there is nothing that can, they can go against the truth but if they live a life that has to be only for the truth and make them to realize today or tomorrow sooner or later to wake up to the fact that they need to stand only for the truth by daily learning the truth by daily understanding the truth by daily recognizing the truth if they don't do that work, then certainly the flock will certainly get shattered off. No vigor, no pasture for them. And what it is we look today in the Christendom. No vigor in the pasture to teach. And that by that time in the spiritual vigor of Christ. To put the things in Krata Christian. When we are weak, then you are strong. Because we are strong by the Spirit of the Lord our God to train you up to be strong for you. And furthermore, he goes on to teach the greatest revolution of all time for us. To put you with proper training, with proper discipline in the order of Katakrisa. Down equipping everyone for the purpose of the Lord our God so that they should not be stumbling blocks. How many days more you want to be irreverent to the Lord's word? Aren't you even like that eunuch when he was reading the book of Isaiah and Lord sent Philip there? The instant when he understood that it was Christ our Lord our God, what did he say? Here is a pool of water, come let me go and take baptized. That's the reaction that every believer ought to have in Christ. 
a reaction of truth, a reaction of righteousness, a reaction of fear towards the Lord of our God. And they have to change to teach the word of the Lord of our God every day in their pulpits from the original languages of the scriptures. Every believer have to come to prove that they should find the true life in Christ. If not, they shall not find the favor of the Lord of our God. When they are not having the favor of the Lord of our God, then they are sinning against their own soul by hating the right word of the Lord of our God. And when they hate the right word of the, word of the Lord of our God, do you know what they love? They love death. And the believers should come, Proverbs 8, 34, to teach every day, day by day, yesterday, today, tomorrow, yesterday, today, tomorrow, to wait upon the doorposts. And those who wait in me, and those who love to seek in me and search in me, they shall have the real happiness in Christ. Every day morning, waking and coming to listening the word of the Lord of our God was a work of Christ. When he said in Isaiah chapter 50, verses 1 through 4, morning by morning, waking upon waking to come and understand the word, so that he can have the tongue of a learn. And he can prove the helicranias so that he can never be a stumbling block. And he can approve the things of more value, of more excellence in Christ. And yet the people love darkness. What a shame it would be when we are not able to become like the beloved sons of Christ. What a shame it would be before the presence of the Lord our God when he has challenged us that we shall keep his word. And he has made us to be blameless. Yet we live a life of lies. Doesn't it could be like the way how Job was being told before God and Satan's discords? He is the one who certainly lives in truth. He honors me. Then Satan challenges you. have given everything. Just remove them and see. He is going to curse you. But the challenge what went along, Job proved that he was right. And Lord was right always. And Lord is always right. And Satan lost the battle. But now we shall look in the place of Job, your name. Because being believing in Christ, you have been made a saint. So you shall add a saint for you and add your name over there. Whether it may be any name, whatever it may, your parents might have given you. And if Lord our God can take that man. And if he's looking for the prayer where Christ our Lord our God has made. That they shall protect thy word. They shall preserve thy word. And they shall certainly keep thy word. And they shall grow up for perfection. Does not Satan will come and mock? Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. Z, Mr. A, Mr. B. See, constantly they are grieving and squelching and lying. That's what Satan will claim towards our Lord of a God. Greater than the fortification what, what Job had, we have greater than that. Because Satan knows very well it cannot break into us. Except by false teachings into your mind. It cannot have a possession of your soul. It cannot have possession of your body. It even dares enough not to think because you know why? It will not even dare enough to touch you because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And I refer back to the Christians who are believers in the Lord wherewith they have been sealed and permanently indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit at the moment of their salvation. Whether the Pentecostal crowds will believe this or not, whether the healing crowds will believe this or not, it's a fact that every believer has been indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. And as he grows up gradually in the word of the Lord of our God, he's going to make a place for the Shekinah glory to indwell in him. And when the Shekinah glory is making a place, then Lord God the Father also will abode in him. And then they will be called, they are perfect, 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 mature, telelios, they have reached the status of maturity. And it takes time. It's not just a process of in a dream or a vision that you have been mature. Or it's not a process when you gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along in your tongues and tell that you have been reaching your perfection or maturity. Throw that stuff from your mind and really burn it off whenever in your pulpit you have such stuff. Apostle Paul writes in Romans 16 for us to teach those who doesn't follow our rule, let them depart. And in every church there has to be a rule of Apostle Paul where he tells everyone has to go through the marine care of the church day in and day out and they have to learn the word of the Lord of our God every day, every day, every day. That's the real principle of the mind of Christ. We haven't really wake up to realize what is the great purpose in Christ that you have been planned in eternity past. We have not to be a stumbling block. We have to be the work of the Lord of our God to prove His glory. That we are being made to fling in our mother's belly. Because we know Yahweh Elohim is our only Lord. 
such great true lord of our god is our only god such great mind of christ is our only purpose and for that in a, when we read in the church age epistles of the dispensation of the church age and the new testament epistles the doctrine of grace the doctrine of flood god the holy spirit the doctrine of the church far higher than that we have been called dear brethren whether you believe it or not before the foundation of the world our lord our god has chosen us to be holy and blameless and there our lord our god doesn't stop he goes further to tell those who believe in my christ john 1 12 that these are the men who have been born according to the will of god the father in heaven what a privilege it is for us not by the will of men, not by the flesh of men, not by the blood of men, but they have been born by the will of God the Father in heaven. For what? So that when they have been exposed in the extreme sun of the light of the word of the Lord of our God, by the time in S U N, not S O N, not sun, but S U N, sun. And that sun, wherewith when you have an extreme exposure as a figurative illustration for you, when we have been able to look upon the Son's Word, which is nothing but the Word of the Lord of our God with extreme light, which is the only light to this blinded world, you shall be found no stumbling block in you. Therefore, every believer has been taken before the foundation of the world to do such work. And to recognize that work, Apostle Paul prays for us in Philippians 1, 9-11, through 11, to grow more and more in the knowledge of the Lord our God, so that you can now be filled with the fruits of righteousness. At one end, they want to blaspheme my Lord's word, including your committee members of the church. How can you do the righteous deeds of the Lord? Comparing to the standards of this earth, you look upon the heaven and you tell, this is the only heaven we have, but you haven't understood the heaven of the third heavens which we have in the Bible, the word of God. Likewise, the believers also compare to the standards of the first heaven and they tell, I'm happy with my standards, I'm happy with my legalism, I'm happy by paying my tithes, I'm happy by coming weekly ones, I'm happy by coming and standing and singing in the choir, I'm happy by playing the instruments, I'm happy by doing X, Y, Z, I'm happy by partaking even in the Lord's table every week. That's only comparison to the standards of this earth, what you look. But you haven't looked upon the third heaven standards. It tells every day you need to come to understand the word of the Lord of our God. It says every day you need to come to realize for the purpose of the mind of Christ, which is to be without having a stumbling block when you have been exposed even to the terms of Helicrines, when it has been told for us to down equip yourself for the catechism work of Christ, because we can do nothing against the Christ, against the truth of the word of the Lord of our God, but only for the truth we sustain. And all these things have been told for us in the mind of Christ for us to realize it's not just weekly ones you partake in the Lord's table, but every day you need to and partake in the Lord's table. The first thing after you brush, it has to take into the partaking of the Lord's elements because you have to look upon the true life to be transfigured for Christ every day. And after that, you will realize as long as you partake in this element, says the scripture in 1 Corinthians 11, remember about him and proclaim the news about him and go along to teach the Catalan of Christ. Proclaim the Caruso work of Christ. That's the plan of the third heavens. The plan of the third heavens in the right biblical design is to teach and expound every word, every word, every word. With proper exegesis, isagogics and categories. Today I wanted to discuss between the things pertaining to Dikaya Sune, where are documents or not Dikaya Sune, documents of Apostle Paul and Dokio of Apostle Peter, the operation of the understanding of your thinking. And documents of that which is good and perfect and acceptable in the sight of the Lord of our God, the test who has been kept by the tester, you meet his those standards. That's what we read in Philippians 1 11. Philippians 1 10 or 11. 1 10. But giving the introduction itself, we have lost the time. And how can we low and how can we move by not teaching the the words where our Lord of our God quoted for us all the time to walk in the fellowship of his truth by expounding word upon word. Do you not think that's the design of the Lord of our God? How can you let go each and every word so easily? In 2 Peter 3, 1, when we read, the minds of your pure one to be stirred up. 
the minds again the operation of your understanding the same word being used the greater you prove your irreverence lord is not happy with that therefore we find many people sick many people not able to wake up and many people are till to the point of death they don't partake in the lord's table for the right mind for the right purpose neither they partake in the lord's calling for a great purpose many are weak sick and up to the point of death we cannot go against his righteousness dear brother anything or everything only in the standards of his righteousness nothing on this earth that could be seem great for you apart from walking in his righteousness because we are called to prove our elecrinas with our stumbling blocks in the day of Christ in milkana cave incident of betsishim irreverence was the key and what happened as a result Perez Uzea the man who did not know the right words of the law the grace of the lord of a god always produces one of two effects a spirit of worship where the heart bows or a constant habit of irreverence where grace is trifled with that's what the congregations are doing today a constant habit of reverent irreverence where the grace of the lord of a god has been trifled with but not a spirit of worship where the heart can bow dear brethren if why you want to use the grace of the lord of a god in vain showing your reverence trifling with the grace but not showing the spirit of bowing down in his presence humbling down there is nothing that you can think in your mind you can do against the mind of christ humbly you need to obey look upon the nature as well you cannot fight against the nature in spite of all the dis- disasters that could come the catastrophic changes that could come no matter how better you may plan that you may escape the earthquake because such of a thing couldn't happen says even to the cothites the cora crowd which certainly rebelled back does the thing happen like that again swallowing out everything we cannot do against the nature or anything itself then how can we work against lord of a god who is a creator of such nation of such natures we cannot do anything dear brother humbly you need to bow down in his presence that's the spirit of grace if the bible tells every day the word of the lord of a god has to be taught who are we to say no If the Bible tells happy are they who could come and wait upon my portals to learn the word of the Lord of God every day by day that is yesterday today and tomorrow who are we to say no in our hardness of our heart why you want to trifle with the reverence the grace of the Lord of God to wane learn the truth specifically understand the truth intentionally a intention constantly to keep in your mind that we shall not be the stumbling blocks but we shall prove the helicrinus of Christ every day you know what a great privilege it is for us to walk in the righteousness of the lord how great would be those years who wake up to realize by the revelation of the word of the lord of god to walk in righteousness of his truth Eunuch was far better the one who was been baptized by Philip who obeyed the truth of the word of the Lord of a God rather than this man who failed to believe because of the hardness of their heart that they're constantly using the grace of the Lord of a God in irreverence trifling with the grace you need to wake up dear brother if you're not able to wake up you will certainly have a tough time at the judgment seat of Christ We have been given the greatest privilege to handle his word. We have been given the greatest gift of the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to teach his truth. Yet we trifle with irreverence in his grace and not to produce the spirit of fear of great grace in our lives for his glory. You need to think over it. Life is not worthy enough. by grieving and squelching and lying and waxing to the dwelling mentoring ministry of Lord get the holy spirit 
Why not? The delight of the Lord our God is our strength. And you make him to grieve and squelch and lie and wax his spirit. And you can expect your goodness. Forget it. Just let it go, the thought from your mind. You cannot. Though you may be his son after believing in Christ, but you cannot. Therefore, the one how he chastens his own son, he is going to discipline us. And the blasphemy that every believer who has been placed in the place of Job in this angelic conflict of the intensified stage, every believer who has been given this equal privilege and equal opportunity to reach MDG, if he yet grieves and squelch and lies to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not searching, seeking, and holding upon the truth, let them wake up to understand that they are really making my Lord not to be glorified on this earth. But yet our Lord our God reigns forever and forever with certain fear. One can smart, can smart thousand and the two men can smart ten thousand. That's the right quantity of thinking in Christ. One man is enough to shake the world. That's what our Lord looks. Though you all may not get the glory to the Lord. One man is equal to a thousand. Two men are equal to ten thousand. Look at upon his calculation, believers. One man is enough to teach the world. To shake the world by the right word. Powerless you all can think you cannot. Lord cannot. Out of thirty thousand men, only three hundred men were being chosen for Lord's battle. That's enough. And one person was equal to thousand to represent, right? Then how much more we should be in Christ today to walk in truth? These crowds, though they have been given to be equivalent to witness not only to this earth, even to the heaven, even to the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of our God every day. And yet the crowds think, what is there for us to do with the Lord? Just go bow down, give him some presents and come back like the Bathsheba crowd. But they fail to witness to this world, to their own lives, to their own consciousness, the spirit of grace. What a shame it is. The pastors themselves also entertain with such like people, like priest orientation of their thoughts. And stand not for the truth in the, in the word of the Lord our God every day. What a shame it is. This life that we enjoy is of a short span in the sight of the Lord our God. We are called to walk in putting the new man, Andy Kaya Sune Kai Hosiatis Thessalatia, in the standards of his righteousness. We are called to put on upon that. That short span, we do not know when is our rapture, we do not know when is our death. Yet abiding faithful in the short span of the Lord our God, our Lord our God knows what are the rewards that he has kept for us. As he put a restriction, dying you shall die, or eating for that reason you shall certainly eat. Emphasizing for you first you eat the spiritual food and then the physical food. Emphasizing for us if you die spiritually you are going to die physically as well. The two Hebrew words which are so essential. First he places a warning for you to be aware. He gives a warning discipline. And if you don't believe for that, he takes to you for the intense first stage of discipline. And if you don't even look for that, your death will be for sure. Sin unto death. For that death even we cannot pray for it, said the Lord. In this great privile privileges of equal opportunity given for us in this great and unique dispensation of the church age. Why do you want to die? A death of sin. If you want to die, be bold enough to tell, Lord, I have fought a good fight. And Lord of a God knows how to take you back home. In whichever manner he seems fit. The dying grace to the believer. But only we shall not be ashamed because before the foundation of the world, our Lord of a God has chosen and kept for us to walk in the terms of elic Helicrine, in the terms of not becoming a stumbling block to the truth. There is nothing the mind of man can go against the stumbling block. To tell that he is going to be against the truth, there is nothing he can do. In the affairs of their lives on this earth, the secret affairs, the secret dealings, they think they are wise enough to do. <laughs> Let them wake up to understand. 
there cannot be any great wise dealing apart from daily learning the word of the Lord of our God because when we are with him he knows he is going to bless the just in the standards of his great justice that's it not only walk in his truth by putting upon the new man so dear brethren remember that our Lord of our God recents reverence and the grace which has given for us we need to bow down in his presence and the kingship wherewith he has chosen to us to kneel down in his presence and to daily learn the word to write the word and I follow the terms pertaining to Elijah and Daniel three times to prove the power of the Lord the first time in the inspired word the second time in the interlinear the third time in the inspired word we kneel down and write the word to learn and we shall not let go every word of the Lord of our God so easily we shall write up and down we shall write front and back we shall go from back to front again because it is the spirit of the word the life that he has given for us we know it is immortal until the work of our Lord of our God be done in our lives and we shall never lose our physical vigor as well as spiritual valor and vigor as well because he knows the battle belongs to the Lord for his glory as Joshua told the sun and moon to stop there our Lord of our God is our God is going to give every day the renovation of our physical vigor as well to realize his battle every breath to be taken when we go front and back and from again back to front his days are his and he knows how many days more you want to keep us alive on this earth and we shall attain the goal from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 rub, rushing front and back and back and front and rubbing back from uh, rubbing back from top to bottom and bob to and, and bottom to top and teaching the word in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic because it is his true we cannot do nothing against the truth and Benjamin Keats can write many things about the terms of tropologia and what are we even we need to follow the same standards to expound every word of Apostle Paul and Peter and every word which has been revealed for us in the Bible to write as Christ our Lord our God himself calls there is no way the world is enough to contain the books of and the deeds of the works what he has written and the Bengal writes for us to understand the trees if they become the saints the earth becomes a paper and the oceans become the waters and the deeds of Christ our Lord our God we cannot write and describe because that is not enough that is not sufficient and those deeds we write now as well without having stumbling block to the grace of the word of the Lord our God in our lives through our lives a little part of us to fulfill Christ's affliction in us for his body of Christ for his church like an unprofitable slaves that which is our duty to be done so dear brethren think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God the Holy Spirit only in his truth with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my God, my salvation. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us were very simple. Believing in Christ, you shall be saved. You shall have this eternal life. For the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot walk in truth. Remember all right. Therefore, that you need to be a believer in the Lord. And to be in the fellowship, you need to use the private of your priesthood to confess your sins, whichever you do, either by thought, word, or deed, inaudibly to Lord God, the Father. So that you need to learn the truth, and the truth shall set you free. There is nothing further from the truth that you can love to have in this earth, which is nothing but Bible doctrine. For the pastor teacher, there is no greater pleasure for him than to teach this truth every day, isagogically, categorically, and exitically. Whether the hears of obvious, he never worries because he has a diamond witnesses for him. Invalid Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, is the diamond from our witnesses for him. Whether the hears of obvious, he will never worry about the softness as well. He realizes only one thing like Noah, there were eight of his own family, like Joshua, they were the only family for him to believe and to walk. And if there is only one family for him to believe and to walk, and the, and the tapes goes through the entire world as well through the YouTube, yet he not worries because he knows the faithful crowd. He has to be only faithful, wherewith our Lord our God has given him the work 
to be very faithful in his duty by daily studying the word, exegeting the word, isolating the word, categorizing the word with the, with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations and with the right intense harmonical principle of the word. He need to explain that and never to worry what the world thinks. <laughs> what is world for him? Nothing. He has only the spiritual world for his life. And everything our Lord of our God is going to supply according to the riches of His grace. He trusts in that principle. That's it. And that principle as well, only in the righteousness that could be reflecting for His life. We cannot keep anything to survive with our flesh as well, to consume the food which has been given by unrighteous means and defile our body. We need to stay pure for the work of the Lord of our God. So which way you go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is to us, O Lord, to have fellowship with you through thy word. Thy word, O Lord, which shall reign forever and forever. The righteousness, O Lord, which is our only standards of criteria which have, dis which have dis dispersed in the thoughts of thy word to teach. As your holy, so we need to be holy without having any stumbling block in us for thy glory. Father, help us, strengthen us more and more, because, O Lord, the old sin nature constantly calls us to sin. But, O oh Lord, you are going to tempt us not to be tempted about against that which you have given for us as our limit. So that, O oh Lord, when we are abiding in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we can reign over only through thy truth. Help us, O oh Lord, diligently to search each and every word of thy truth, running up and down and from down to up and brushing it out so that, O oh Lord, every word could come, the greatest glory of shine, which is for thee on this earth, for the minds of the hearers of this people. Father, we commit everything into thy mighty hands, O Lord. Kindly lead us in the truth at every breath of our life. To this extent we pray, Father, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us. And may Lord God the Holy Spirit challenge us for thy glorious glory to be in Christ forever. To be an unstumbling block and a, to be sincere. The word helicrinas. A sincere when being judged in the extreme exposure of the Son of Light. We could certainly stand there without blame, without spot. As Christ our Lord our God has made for us, even in our works, even in our every breath of our life, to be practically sensible in defending thy truth and to be practically living a life of thy glory. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these times. Amen. <laughs>